Hello, we are here again. We are, hello. Because we are enjoying the cinema thing and you're off work, so. I am, I am two weeks. Ta-da. Well, you got a week left now, haven't you? Yeah, we're just under a week, yeah. yeah. Excellent. So, we saw Paddington. Paddington two. two. So I guess the first question is, we both saw the first Paddington and we both liked it. Yeah. Have you watched it since? Um, I watched it... I, I have, I can't remember exactly when, but I have, yeah. I, I haven't, actually. I haven't, oh, okay. I haven't seen it again yeah. since. But I do remember really enjoying it at the time. And when the two came out, we was like, ooh, we should talk to that. And then we saw more trailers, like, yeah, we should go, yeah, go see it. So we, um, we did, and it was. And it was. <laughs> so much fun. <laughs> so good, so good. Um, just a quickie, because it's not a big story. Um, we were like one of six, pe two or six people in the audience mm. with that. And there was like a couple of ladies on our um, rows of older lady, older than us. And um, I obviously let them go first. And they were like, did you like that? And that was good, wasn't it? <laughs> Not just for kids. <laughs> Not just for or kids. Us. <laughs> or us, no. So yeah, very, very <clears throat> thoroughly job. Broad audience. You, if you're watching this, you've already seen rev other people's reviews. You've probably seen it yourself. It's, I'm, I was looking up the yelling time earlier and it's like 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. Wow. Yeah. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. And lots of other, like, you know, not everything's 100 100 like on the things I was looking at, like the other aggregate, like just on the Google search, but mm. yeah, it was a lot of really positive, happy reviews. Nice, yeah, I'm not surprised. <coughs> so well done, that bear. Yeah, yeah, too right. Oh, so yeah, I mean, obviously I recommend it. It's for fun, yeah. it's a fun film for all the family. Um, I wouldn't even say that you necessarily have to have seen the first one. I don't think so, no. I mean, obviously if you want to, and it doesn't hurt, it introduces the characters in the first instance and mm. tells you how Paddington got into this world. Mm. But, you know, it's if you haven't, if it's, if it's on, you don't have to panic. No. No. Yeah, you, I reckon you could sit down with it for, for the run time and really take a lot away from it and really thoroughly enjoy it mm. without <laughs> having seen the first one. Yeah, I mean, if you know Paddington exists, you know he's with this human family <clears> in London and... <throat> That's yeah. all you really need to know, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So we, we both give it a high, high recommendation. Fun for all the family. Yeah. Look, look very cute and very funny and, and sweet. And yes, I liked it. Yes. Ditto. Uh, Ditto. There's, there's not much more you can say before you get into the sort of silly spoilery area. Um, is it? Not really. Um, all the acting was good. The I mean, oh yeah, the even the deliberately cheesy acting was good. <laughs> because you knew it was deliberately cheesy. Yeah. Uh, it was very funny. Very funny. Very, very funny. Very funny. Um, uh, musical numbers. <laughs> we'll get to that. We'll, we'll get to those. It's <laughs> so good. A couple of really um, good sight gags with that as well. Yeah. Uh, but no, I think that's that's it really. Without delving into the uh, into the yes. the sitch. Into the yeah. So yeah, go go see it. Go see it. If you haven't, I mean, to be fair, we're watching it quite late. It's been up for a little while. That's why it was in the little theatre with um, only six people but the people we were with I mean the, at least those ladies enjoyed it yeah yeah mm -hmm. so um if you haven't already then uh, you have to know what's wrong with you or maybe you haven't had a chance if it's still playing and you don't want to go like because you know, Star Wars is going to be super crowded mm -hmm. if you want to see a fun film that, I'm not saying don't see Star Wars because we haven't seen it yet we can't make any recommendation on that but if you don't if you just want to see a fun movie that isn't going to be overly crowded mm -hmm. and it's still playing then go see it Paddington 2 if you're really interested to go see Star Wars, then you're going to go see Star Wars. Yeah. Or anything else. But, you know, it's... Go see them both. Yeah, well, yeah, sure, sure. But um, if you like us and not necessarily keen on them too crowded a theatre... Yeah. yeah, maybe for a man or something. Yeah. Yeah, which we did. Yeah. So, yeah, go if you haven't see seen it already, go see it. And go for, definitely watch the first one as well, but you don't have to watch the first one. No, no. Um... No, it doesn't, you, d you don't need to, the story doesn't follow on as such. No, it's it just, just <coughs> things happen in the first film, <coughs> time passes, now we're in the second film. Yeah, exactly, exactly, too true. Yes. Yeah. All right. So, Spoilers! <laughs> <laughs> into, into the deets. Um, so <clears> we have a lovely little, I guess you call it a cold opening, where um, Aunt Lucy and Uncle Other Bear. Um, Patuzo, that's Patuzo, something like that. They're on, they're on a bridge, and they're talking. Yes, and they're talking about. Yeah, they're watching the rain, rainy season. So they're like rains and, and floods. I'm, I'm guessing Peru regularly gets rainy seasons like that. I guess so. 
and then um, they say, oh, this will be our last rainy season. They're sitting there eating marmalade sandwiches and talking about going to London. And they see um, a cub in, clearly in distress in the water, probably got away from its family somehow, branch broken. And of course they rescue him. And of course it's Paddington. <laughs> So that's kind of the thing, and they said, we're not going to Aunt Lucy's, we're not going to London, we've got a bear to raise. <laughs> so they, they do the right thing and they raise the bear. They take care of the baby, which is good. Always take care of stray babies, do what you can. Happens a lot over the Christmas season. Oh, don't, don't, just don't, don't, don't. Oh no, I just mean, you know, when like, the, the, the cliche yeah. of babies being left in the little basket with the blanket over it outside someone's door, yeah. and they open the door, oh, a baby, we must raise it. That's a bit of a cliche thing, that's all, that's all I meant. <laughs> oh good, I thought, so, it was good. I thought it was going to have a sad ending. No, no, there's no story behind it. <laughs> no, thankfully. Have you been in movies or in <clears> life? <throat> um, just in films and TV. Ah, oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, no sad stories. No sad stories. <coughs> happy things, happy things. Uh, so we, we are um, quickly reintroduced to the family yeah. um, through Paddington's letters to Aunt Lucy. Um, so Jonathan is now J Dog hmm. and he's too cool for school. Hmm. Uh, girl, damn. Oh, what is her name? Um, I want to say Abigail, but that's someone else. No. Um, daughter. Da da <laughs> Dorts. Sorry, um, I don't running, remember your name. <laughs> Dorts running the news, the school newspaper. No boys allowed because she got dumped. Yeah. Um, By Tony. Yeah. Mrs. Bird is Mrs. Bird, and the parents are. <laughs> Well, Dad's going through a midlife crisis, yeah. <laughs> and Mum's just Mum. She want Mum. Mum's an illustrator, which actually is a big, big kind of a plot point. And um, she also wants to swim the, the English Channel because she's she wants an adventure of her own. Yeah, because she's she's been illustrating so many adventure yeah. books. She wants her own adventure, which yeah. is kind of cool. Yeah, I can that's, get that's behind that. Yeah. So yeah, you, you've got scenes where um, <clears throat> she's obviously doing her training, her swimming training, which is fair enough, and he's um, going to chakrabatics. <laughs> Open up your mind and your legs will follow. <laughs> <laughs> Which he fails miserably at. He does, but it, it's a funny scene. Yeah. And yeah, so um, you sort of, it's kind of what you see in the trailer where he goes, um, they say about the steam fet, which looks amazing. Yeah, it does look really cool. Like a it? proper oldie, old, you know, old, well, yeah, old Victorian century. style, yeah. almost. Fun fair, yeah. Yeah, all, all steam powered, where of course, and um, the Dort's talking about it and saying that oh we should go and we cover it for the school newspaper and her brother's like uh more lame and it's like uh you love steam trains and then you see him like built he's have built his own <laughs> steam train yeah. but that's not cool steam trains not cool so we can't talk about it yeah. but yeah they, the, um so he you get this lovely sequence where he's um he's obviously talking to this is Paddington talking to Lucy Aunt Lucy sorry about his life now he's sort of settled in. And we have this like lovely sequence of him like getting on a lady's bike and giving her a sandwich. Mm. So, oh, thank you, Benton. Really makes my day. He's saying hello to everyone on the street. Oh, don't forget to don't forget your keys. Oh, crap! Yeah, you know, caught the door. Thank you, Paddington. Yeah. All these people's lives he's touched. Talking to the, the colonel. The colonel who was sort of reclusive, wasn't he, in his yeah. dark room, and then he, Paddington brings him out of that. Yeah, and, and talking to um, the, um, the lady, lady the newsstand, the newsstand, um, and saying about how. Oh, how was your date? Oh, terrible. And his, she, her parents are like, but you're more fresh in the sea. <laughs> and she throws him a newspaper. Thank you. Yeah. And so he's he, so going along on the bike, saying hello to everyone. He meets with his friend who's the bin man. Yep. Who's, who's doing the knowledge, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's doing the knowledge. So test me. So he's, yeah. he's got the book at the A to Z and he's testing yeah. like, things all over the place. And it's like, so it's this really lovely sequence. He's going places and meets his dog friend, gives him yeah, gives him Wolfie. a sneak. Wolfie. Wolfie. An Irish wolfhound, huge thing. Yeah, massive. <laughs> Why is an Irish wolfhound stray there? Just, yeah. oh, no, no. Um, he seems happy. <laughs> and he goes to see his men, friend Mr Gruber, mm. who works in the um, antique shop. I, I assume he owns it. Mm. Gruber's antiques. Isn't yeah. It? And, um, wonderful Jim Broadbent. Lovely Jim Broadbent, who's, I don't know what accent he's going for, but it's pretty sharp. It was, yeah, it was good. Maybe sort of Austrian mm. something. I don't know. <laughs> Bless him. Um, he does it very well though. But yeah, so so that's kind of gets you to the plot of like, oh, because he the reason he has the book, which you would have seen in the trailer, which he calls it a popping book, popping book, popping book, <laughs> popping book, um, is because the owner of the fair, Mrs. Kozlova, Kozlova wants some stuff sold, mm. like she's got this old stuff, 
and so he's like, oh, maybe there's something in there for your Aunt Lucy. And uh, there's a great little scene where he's like got this like acrobat monkey thing, mm. and um, Paddington, you see Paddington rummage around, you see like a thing of fruit. And um, he turns to like, what do you think of this, this monkey thing? And he turns around with the full um, Carmen Miranda. Carmen Miranda, yeah. Uh, fruit, and the fruit funny fruit glasses head. with the fake nose <laughs> yeah, and the yeah. stash. <laughs> Mr. Gruber, please be serious. <laughs> <laughs> Completely flat. Yeah, that was great. And then he just chucks it back in the book. Yeah, yeah that was very good. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, we have the, we meet the book. It's like, oh, this is a very pretty book. Mm. And like, if Aunt Lucy saw this, you know, she'd never, you know, she wouldn't have to visit and. Mm. She can, he can show her, he can show Aunt Lucy London now without her yeah, going to, to, to travel. It turns out she's a hundred. Yeah. I didn't know brown bears live, the Peruvian bears live that long, but I guess magic <laughs> Peruvian bears live that long. Yeah, I suppose so, yeah. They can live as long as they want. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's going to be her <coughs> hundredth birthday and, and Paddington wants to get her this pop-up book as the present. And because it's like basically the premise is the late, the grandmother, the founder of the fair, everywhere she went to draw, make a popping book of where she went, which is a kind of cool, mm. cool idea, yeah, cool, cool idea, yeah. and we get to be into this wonderful animated sequence, which mm. does. I go. I haven't read the original Bond books, but it definitely echoes the illustration style of the cartoon series. Mm. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. So um, I don't know. I can't speak to the books. Um, so I don't know if the cartoon series echoes the books and the films echoing both. But yeah, it's this wonderful sequence where they turn the page. Because they're going from, like, he meets her off the boat, boat, and then they go into the underground, and as they go into the underground, the page turns and they come up. Mm. They're uh, in up. the pop-up book. Yeah, it's, it's just gorgeous. It's so, it's so beautiful. good. So that sequence is definitely worth highlighting and talking about. But it's, that's just kind of a thing that happens, but it's beautifully. And then, um, yeah, so he's like, oh, well, my, you know, Mrs. Bird found this in my ear, and it's like, refers to a joke from earlier on where he pulls 50p out from his ear <laughs> and you go oh oh dear you need at least another thousand though so the book's worth 500 quid yeah and so i thought this was going to go into a sequence of all the jobs he's no good at all oh, right okay so we see him in the barbers which is a hilarious sequence yeah because so basically sorry just to interrupt there don't so, go for it. so yeah so paddington doesn't have the, the 500 pounds to to buy the pop-up book for aunt lucy so he says i'm going to get a job and i'm going to buy that book for Aunt Lucy's birthday. Yes. And that's when we cut to yeah him, him trying out his different jobs to get the money. So um, you've got the scene with him and the barbers, and he's yes. only supposed to be just a tidy up boy. Yeah, just the sweeper upper. And this person comes in and is like, yep, chop chop, barber. I say, oh, I'm not the barber, I'm just the clean up person. <laughs> and then, nope, 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 that's what I want, to clean up on the, um, you know, tidy up on the back and sides. Yeah. So he sits down in the chair and he falls asleep <laughs> in the chair, this old man. And so you, you have a sequence of shenanigans and hilarity. <laughs> so good. Um, first of all, he's just like trying to work it because he gets the scissors out of his thing and he's oh, they're stuck in the ceiling. And he picks up a pair of clippers, which because he's a very small bear, <laughs> apparently these big clippers have got a serious vibe on them. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so he's <laughs> basically waffling all around the shop. Just in circles. <laughs> so um, you have to see it, it's amazing. Yeah, uh, the upshot it. is that he ends up accidentally. Because someone calls the, the shop and he says, oh, I'm sorry, I think I'm about to clip someone's hair, please go call you back. <laughs> and then he gets caught because this cord has been trapping around everything in the yeah, store. Yeah, yeah. I okay, he's not. And then, of course, he accidentally knocks the chair, front back, whoop, straight up. So, <laughs> so a nice little strip of the back of this old guy. Reverse head. mohawk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, have you seen, have you seen um, t -t 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 <laughs> Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs? <laughs> The Mr. T character. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <Try> that word. <laughs> uh, spot on. Yeah. <laughs> I love a <my> boy. <laughs> so that basically, yeah, that and then he obviously tries to he tries to stick the hair back on with yeah, marmalade, with the marmalade and yeah. just putting some product on your your hair, sir. Marvelous, really. Yeah. Yeah. So that and obviously it's not it. You get the, the gag where the kid, the mum and boy are outside. I don't want a haircut. <laughs> Bear slams into window. <laughs> Let's go to another shop. Yeah. <laughs> I have that same reaction. <laughs> and the, the, the owner comes back, Mr. Giuseppe. He's like, it's not as bad as it looks. Things break. Fire alarm. You know, smoke. <laughs> sprinklers all come on. And then it cuts immediately to the next scene with Paddington with the family outside with the entrance <laughs> to Costler's steam fair. Yeah. And then Paddington's saying, Have you ever been fired, Mr. Brown? <laughs> so. <laughs> 
we, we know what happened to poor old Paddington from the barbershop. So then we get the scene in the, the, the fair, which, like I said, looks amazing. Mm, it does. We'll have to find one. Yeah, yeah, it must be someone. Something it must be like someone. Exactly, something. Yeah. Yeah, something. Um, and then you get the scene where he's introducing Hugh Grant, where he, you know, he's like, oh, it turns out that he's actually a neighbour of theirs. Mm, yeah, he lives at the end of the road, doesn't he? I don't think he was in the first film. No, he wasn't. No, 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 no. No, no. And, so, he's this, sorry, he's this uh, <coughs> Phoenix Buchanan. Yeah, I was about to say, that it, it's actually Phoenix, and that's confirmed later on when you see it written down. Yeah, but yeah. did you keep thinking they're saying Felix? Felix, yeah, I did, yeah. Yeah, well, the, the first time I thought it was, I knew it was Phoenix, was when they had that... Um, notebook. The, the notebook thing. Like for the desk the problem, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, I, I kept thought it was Felix. They need to enunciate. Enunciate. <laughs> enunciate. Um, yes, yeah, so he's some famous... <laughs> and as a Phoenix, I, I'd say, I, I feel very... Um, Yes. <laughs> I knew you were going to come to that. Yeah, sorry. Anyway. Um, yeah, so Q Grant Carrot of Phoenix Buchanan was this famous actor. Um, now does dog food now he does dog food commercials. Oh, wait, we do get to see one of them. It's yes, hilarious. So good. <laughs> or Mr. Grant. <laughs> um, so he, he's he been brought in to open the, the steam fair. As the local celebrity. Yeah, as the local celebrity. As, so he's the local celebrity in London. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, we just can't get anyone else apart from this, this has been who now does dog food advert. <laughs> so we don't know how local it is to that particular area, but. Yeah, I mean, you need quite a sizable, like, Hyde Park sort of size. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. But anyway, it, it, <laughs> that's it progresses. That's the joke. Yeah, that's the joke. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing time is over. <laughs> I kill you now. <laughs> it progresses the plot. So, yeah, it does yeah. the job. Um, so, yeah, he gets brought in to open the fair. Uh, he says, I'm going to get one of you ordinary people. He's very, very smug, very up himself. I'm going to get one of you ordinary folk to open the fair. Ooh, little bear. So he picks Paddington. Paddington. To be fair, you would. Stage. Yeah, you would. It's just, <laughs> that's unusual. Um, and Paddington makes the point, the point to him about, oh, you used to be an actor. but He does recognise him that. as living in the history. He does actually recognise Paddington. Yeah, yeah, he does. And he's like, oh, what, no, this is a place where dreams come true. So mm. what is your dreams? I want to buy out Lucy Impression. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> it's a wonderful pop-up book that uh, Miss Kozlova herself wrote many years ago. Oh, uh, and that's, that's when he's like, hmm, really? You don't say. Yes. And then so he's like, oh, we declare this as Steam Bear Open. Yeah, marvellous, yes. Yeah. Uh, and then Paddington's just walking away and says, but bear, a word in your ear. Yeah. And he says, how did you come across Miss Coslin's pop-up book? <laughs> One thought it was lost forever. <laughs> and that's when he said it was in Mr. Gruber's antique shop. Yeah, 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 I see, yeah, run along. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think then that goes to the, the, the yeah. following scene with the break-in. No, 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 because he has a job first. Oh, of course, yeah, he does the, so, the windows, doesn't he? Yeah, so <laughs> you have this thing where he's now a window cleaner. Oh, you've given me a wonderful <laughs> idea. I can't remember, you're telling him about water, you know, cleaning up. Anyway, so he says, oh, yeah, I'm going to be a window cleaner. So you think it's going to be another disaster montage. <laughs> But it's not. It's a bit of a sequence where he's trying to work out what to do when he's, you know, he's a small bear with a big bucket of water yeah. and using way too many bubbles. Puts it on a rope pulley system. He's got his really cool um, ladder system where he cranks it up yeah. and it goes up. <laughs> That's very funny. And it's, so he's like trying to get the water up. <laughs> and you think, oh no, it's going to be thing. And he's like, you see him when the scene, ah, oh, with the, the doc, I can remember the guy from Goodness Gracious to me. Really good actor. Um, I've seen a lot of stuff. Sanji Basco. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> plays the uh, Indian doctor in the, the TV series. Oh, serious. Yes. Okay. See, uh, well, try not to, you know, because he's a very good actor and it's a very good show, but it is an Indian doctor in Wales. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> okay then. So that's <laughs> kind of funny. Okay, so the cliche is you can't do a Welsh accent without going into an Indian accent. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've tried it many, many days. <laughs> <laughs> Boil. <laughs> anyway, we're not we, going, we digress. We're not, we're not digressing into that. Um, so you have the scene where he's like washing the window with his bum and all that. <laughs> and you think, oh, this is going to be disaster. But no, it actually turns out he's actually good at yeah, it. Yeah, he's very good at it. Yeah, because actually the colonel, who was the reclusive, yes. don't want to talk to anyone, was you were sort of see in his flat. He calls up and says, would you like your windows clean, colonel? And he's like, no, go away. Oh, well, I'd better do them anyway. Yeah, he said, I'm not, pay I'm not paying yeah. you. He said, oh, I'll do them anyway, because yeah. he's a nice bear. He's a nice bear. He's a good, he's a good, he's then, a good boy. So he, because he can now see, because you... You have the scene where it's inside, you're, you're it's watching grubby, the wind, it's He's sitting grubby. there with his cup of tea, all It'll miserable. Dark. And then you slowly, oh, I think it's a really gorgeous effect, you slowly, yes. the camera pans around on Ben. What's his yes. name? Him. 
him, the the guy who played the colonel with Ben, sorry, he'll come to me. Oh. Um, and the the sun slowly starts creeping in onto the side of his face. Like we've got where he's cleaned the window. Yeah, yeah that's beautiful. And he looks out the window and he sees um, the the newsstand girl, well, who's also a very famous British person. She is Jessica. Jessica. Jessica I, Hines. Yeah. Or she was Jess Kynes. No, Jessica, married person. Yeah. Jessica. Jessica. Very good. New stand lady. Um, she, yeah, and then that's when they sort of uh, catch each other's eye. Love at first sight. They're, they're, doing the, they're doing the flirty thing where she's going down the stairs. <laughs> yeah, doing the, 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 down the, the lift. lift. Um, oh, it's very sweet. And just so we don't forget, that story is through the, the entire movie. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. at each time you see them, those characters, they're like closer and closer. It's yeah. really adorable. It's really cute. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So that's, and then, so then we have the robbery because mm. we've established he's got. So you, you've kind of got a cutaway montage scene where his jar is filling up. Mm, with yeah, Aunt Lucy's birthday present fund. Yeah, it's filling up with all like these little coins, little pennies. That's cute. So I don't know if he's just cleaning on the street or if he's going a little further out. We well, did the shard. That was that was one of the better <laughs> visuals. Okay, so you're getting lots of cutaways. Bumble, bumble. You're getting lots of cutaways of. The customer arrive view, so you're seeing Paddington in the window from their point of view. Yeah. And you see a few cutaways and everyone's like, yeah, give them thumbs up and saying hello and all this stuff. And then you got the music playing and the, the jazzy the mumbo kind of thing going on. And I think they did this joke in the original, but the way the yeah. reveal on this was so good. <laughs> so, good. so basically, <clears throat> he's doing the window because you know Mr. Brown works in a, a big banking office. He's, he's, an, he's an insurance broker, but you don't know where it was. And so he's doing the thing, he's using his whole body, and they got the mum, 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 music going on. one of those big lifts that the Well, we don't know that immediately. Well, we don't know that immediately. We see him doing the thing, and he's going down, like, thing. And so he's on one of the big lifts, and it's the shard. You know, the big outside building lift thingy. I'm not sure what they're called. And the band is with him. The band is just like there with him. They're all kind of doing things. He's going, and he's got like a few, a few of the windows, and just a wibbly wibbly wobbly string. Well, it's not a string. It's a clean bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was fun. That was fun. So then you got. We it goes to. He's on his way home, and he's and it's late. It's dark, late at night, and he's pushed his nose up against the window to look at his thing, and so he immediately wipes it off again. Yeah, he's looking in the window of Gruber's antique shop. We got to look at the book the pop-up the, the oh we book. forgot he also he also cleaned wolfie oh yeah he did clean wolfie with his <laughs> dr 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 toothbrush as well yeah um and then he hears a, a window smash when he's looking in the mr the gruber you're not mr gruber <laughs> ah, get lost. yeah um, so that's fagin type character yeah guy with a big duffel trench coat and a big <laughs> beard he's climbing in the top roof of gruber's shop um and he steals <laughs> smashes the, the cabinet where the book is steals the popping book the popping book uh, and then a, a little chase in shoes. Good chase with Wolfie and uh, Wolfie and Paddington. It was a goose. Tow. And, and a yeah, and a goose. Uh, originally yeah. it was a goose because he goes one because he's on the bike. Like we'll call him Fagin. Fagin was on the bike, and he's like ha. ha, ha. He goes one way around the canals and he goes another. And then Paddington's like oh ha. And then sees like boats and stuff. So I'm wondering if he would just work that anyway. It was because he's been helping his friend study the knowledge. Yeah, maybe. Bit yeah. of both. Yeah. Bit of both. Yeah. So yeah, so you, so you got a half a chasing with a dog, where he's riding this big wolf, wolfhound, and then a half a chasing where he's hanging off a goose, which eventually gets annoyed with him and just pecks his, his muzzle. No, not the muzzle! <laughs> <laughs> what do you call it? A snout? I don't know. his muzzle mm. snout? Mm. Nose. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, and then the, 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 eventually Mr. Fagin oh. gets away. He gets um, caught up with, he goes, ha ha, I bear, I go, yeah. and he goes, poof, puff of smoke, the whole stage smoke thing. Disappears. And of course the um, WPC who has been following him since the um, alarm went off catches up with him and then, you know. He's arrested so, for the theft. <coughs> so as a, as a representative of the law, is that realistic at all? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> <coughs> so, as, so he's, um, well, obviously now he's on trial. Mm. And he's like, I'll be fine if I've got a fair-minded judge. <laughs> and it cuts to the guy whose hair he cuts in the barber <laughs> shop. Oh dear. Because you got that before I did. Because yeah. they did do a flashback <laughs> reveal, but you giggled before I got it. <laughs> I just recognised him straight away. <laughs> um, yeah, I thought, oh dear. Um, I will say, because they had a couple of witnesses. They had... Um, Peter Capaldi wasn't one of the witnesses, was he? Um, no. But they had... No, you know, um, 
Gruber, I said, oh, he was saving up. He would never have stole my book. I don't believe he stole it. So Gruber mm. definitely ste stepped, up, stepped up for him. Yeah, everyone was like, oh, thank goodness for that. He's going to get off. Fantastic. Yeah. And then call uh, Phoenix Buchanan to the stand. Yeah, and, we were And then, yeah, and then he. he said, Did you? Because uh, because obviously mum's an illustrator. Oh, and yeah, they had she, the pictures she's illustrated a little mugshot of the, uh, the burglar that Paddington saw. Now, I will say, because uh, you, did you see this man? The old testimony you know, is key. And of course he says, no. But we've already had it revealed that it was him. Mm. And his. Um, see, he's got his attic full of his old costumes, which is kind of awesome and creepy and i'm also kind of like do they let actors keep their old costumes i don't know um well, i don't think they're supposed to but i suppose so some places do i mean i know it's kind of the talk about cliches it's kind of the cliche that the actors will have all their director's chairs yeah you see mm. that like a certain scene like i know the um opening scenes of the hard way has nick lang with all his chairs oh, right. <laughs> thing so on the one hand a sort of museum of your own career is a bit sad <laughs> But on the other hand, it was quite the way they set it up was quite mm, nice. It was quite nice, yeah. And yeah, so you it revealed it's him. Oh, lucky me that bears come along and it took all the um, thing from us. Yeah, Unveils Blame and him. takes the beard and everything off the fake nose and unveils himself as the faking burglar. Yeah. Um, so um, when he said, when when answering the question, did you see this man? The honest answer is no. No, no, he didn't. No. He didn't lie. <laughs> no, that's that's true. Yeah. No. He, yeah. <laughs> The questions that he was posed in the courtroom under oath, he answered yeah. them truthfully. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, uh, yeah. Um, and he said, "Yes, your your uh, your, your testimony is critical yeah. to determine whether or not Paddington is guilty." <laughs> he went, oh, "No, I didn't see the bear at all. Didn't, <sighs> see, the, didn't see the man. Yeah, didn't see the man. Sorry, yeah. Um, so didn't then, see the bear because he was. No. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, uh, now Paddington's in jail for ten years ten for years. grand theft. Oh wait, <laughs> uh, and was it um, grievous barbarly harm? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. I think 10 years is a little excessive. Well, maybe if it was a different judge, <laughs> the, the sentence might have been better, but. <laughs> um, so, yeah, he's, uh, he's in. now in prison. He's introduced to his cell where he writes a little nice Which little one note. was it they said at the end? Which one it was? <sighs> well, which prison? Yeah. Portobello prison. Oh, yeah. I don't know if that's a real prison. I don't it is. Oh, is it? I think so. It's no, off right. Portobello Road, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, so, he's doing the Aunt Lucy letter. Saying, oh, I've, I've got a new place now. It's um, I'm no longer staying at Windsor Gardens. I'm it's somewhere else. It's a Victorian, else. you know, it's, it's, Victorian it's, period it's, property with amazing security features. <laughs> <laughs> trying, is, to, yeah. trying to make it look all nice, yeah. but yeah. So <clears> the um, you got got the sympathetic guard. Come on, bear. Because it's, um, you know, Mrs. Brown always read me a bedtime story. No bedtime stories here, mate. Mm. But, <laughs> so he climbs up on the end because it got piping and there's a bit of a shelf at the window of it, so he's yeah. laying his layer there. It's all very sad. Yeah, it is, bless him. And then um, he gets, he's trying like, be positive. It's like next day, so be positive, be friendly. Hmm. Hello, interested in starting a garden club? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll dig an hole and put you in it, bear. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> You're after you. <laughs> and he gets put on laundry duty and he's like in the room on his own. <laughs> and he says, oh, okay, laundry. Presses the button. Covered in it. Comes down from a hatch in the ceiling. <laughs> Gross to see where a so there's a sock in his mouth, though white, the cliche white and brown, white black stripy uniform. Yeah. And then someone's obviously wearing a red sock. And it's actually quite good. They have like a, a top down scene where he's sorting out all the laundry and mm. getting everything done. He's all, he's very, really he's a very honest, very honest little, but yeah, he does mm. get on with it. He makes the best of things. Yeah, he's and he, he goes, oh, takes off his own clothes yeah. and puts them in. Puts them in, not realising that the red sock that had fallen on him was still on his hat. So he throws <laughs> the hat in with all the white laundry in the, the uniforms, yeah. the big uniforms uh, washing machine. Yeah, um, big industrial things, which you would just the button, you see. The... Starts, door locks, starts whirring around. If and that, then he goes, if that's have a sandwich and then... Realises that the red sock's in there, can't get the door open. <laughs> <And> it, <laughs> what can one red sock do? What damage can do? Immediately cut to the next scene in the canteen with all of the... All of the prisoners just sitting there with pink and black uniforms, which looks amazing. <laughs> it does, good. but only one machine had a red sock in it, so I don't know what. The yeah, one... there was not that many uniforms in. Logic. Maybe anyway. he maybe he deliberately did it afterwards to make sure they all match. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, you want to sit down and have your yeah. yeah. It looked like some porridge yeah. gruel thing. I don't know, we've been having this three days. Of... Every like, day it... for ten year. Because yeah. well, one of the guys, oh, I saw right, I used to be a restaurant critic, ain't that bad. 
It's worse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, ain't as bad as it looks. It's worse. <laughs> yeah. like, someone should say something to the chef. <gasps> Knuckles. No, nobody talks to Knuckles. <laughs> oh, I'm sure he's not that bad. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Knuckles. <laughs> and this massive, really tall... Who I know, but I can't remember. Yeah, I can't remember his name. Irish guy, isn't he? Yeah. A uh, big, sort of big white father Christmas beard turns around. What do you want, bear? It's not... Oh, no. I was going to say... But I don't think it is. Uh, it's not Gleason, is it? Mm, Donald Gleason, no. No. no oh, you that's what I meant. Mm. Big, um, big, 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 big guy. Yeah, he's like, um, and he makes a recommendation that maybe you know we should have. You can, you can make a complaint. Change. I don't like. I like it when people complain. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, in that case. <laughs> yes, oh, brilliant. And, and he, you got the guard at the back going, <laughs> medic. <laughs> Call a medic. And then Paddington, while he's talking to Knuckles, accidentally squirts some ketchup on his uniform, the front of his apron. Yeah. And he goes, oh, don't worry, I have to get that out. Ke oh, no, um, that's just making it worse. <laughs> yes. Mustard. Oh, no, that's that's worse. <laughs> Forget the medic. Get a priest. <laughs> that's brilliant. Um, so funny. Um, and then he knuckles, grabs him, and is threatening him. And he goes, does he go to punch him? Like, and he, no, he flinches don't. back, and you, his um, sandwich falls out. His sandwich his hat. falls out of his hat into his mouth. He lowers his hat, and you just see this this marmalade sandwich in Knuckles' mouth. And then just oh, <laughs> heavenly music. This is not, yes, what is this? Oh, Lucy, maybe can we make it? You can make this. <laughs> this bear is under my protection. <laughs> yeah, and you see the big guy who threatened him before <laughs> just go. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we cut to like the next day. He's helping. Like you get, oi, bear! Cause he comes in his room and pops, yeah. pops his nose. Wakes him up early morning to go and make some. Which is not, you know, um, kitchens would have that yeah. early start. Yeah, and the guards giving him all the stuff, all, like the sugar and the. Um, yeah, um, like all the oranges. oranges. So we get. Oh, did you actually catch the headline in the newspaper? There was, it was called Hard Times, wasn't it? The yeah. name of the newspaper was Hard Times, and there was one on the front, and then there was one about laundrette. Which yeah. one were you talking about? The laundrette. <laughs> the laundrette. Well, I think I saw one, did you money, la front? money laundering or something? Money, yeah, money, um, laundrette <laughs> caught money laundering, details being ironed yeah, out. Yeah, that's it, that's it. I can't remember what the one on the front was. Um, <laughs> it'll come to me. It'll come so to we're me. doing the thing with, so Paddington's climbing up to do the orange, to the, uh, yeah, because they're trying, he's trying to make nice, Mr. McGinty. Um, and he's like, yeah, knuckles begin to. Yeah. He's like, oh well, are you? I'm not your buddy. I'm your boss. So he sits on the chair, reads his newspaper. Paddington climbs up where the oranges are. Like, oof, oof, pull, all fall out. <laughs> Little help. <laughs> Grabs it. Oh, the white guy carrying on one at a time. Okay. Cuts. <laughs> cut. One orange. Two. Orange. <laughs> Two juicy oranges. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I'm having them one at a time. Sacks. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> he's like, oh, I'll help. Like, I'm not much of a chef. He's like, well, you know, I've got these arms. They look they're like good orange squeezing arms. Yeah. So we have a lovely little montage of them making marmalade together. Sniffing the oranges. That's good. That one's good. Oh, no, not that one. Oh, that one's juicy. Yes. <laughs> squeezing Squeeze. them into, yeah. They add, add the sugar and a bit more sugar. And a pinch of cinnamon. And more sugar. Yeah. <laughs> Stirring it all up. Um, um, and then does it, it cuts them to them presenting the sandwiches to all the prisoners. Yeah, so he's got a, um, like a pot lid on a string and a, like some kind of, I guess, kitchen fork. Oh, because I had the scene where he's doing the uh, rhymes and Aunt Lucy always says be careful with the knives. How did you learn to do that? You don't want to know. You don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they're making all the marmalade all the rhymes and everything. It looks really good. It's like all set. Right. Yeah. So he goes, attention, today's breakfast is marmalade on a warm crustless bread topped with another warm crustless <laughs> bread. <laughs> yeah. And everyone's looking at it like, mm -hmm. oh. And then they, um. And then, well, Paddington then goes back into the kitchen. They don't like it. They like it. Oh, yeah. What great. do you mean they don't like it? Did they like it? I don't care. Do they like it? <laughs> <laughs> um, and why don't you come and see, it. Mr. McGinty? And so Paddington and Knuckles walk out of the kitchen into the canteen They're and like, all of the prisoners are just like, mmm, it's loving these marmalade sandwiches. And so they, he goes, there's a fuzzy feeling in my belly. <laughs> <laughs> That's pride, Mr. McGinty. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Bless him. So then you get this wonderful sequence of gentrification the, um, the prison. <laughs> oh, that was so good. <laughs> oh my God, So yeah. obviously they're on the long tables. Mm. Oh yeah, so because, sorry, yeah, because the, then all the prisoners, when they've had the marmalade sandwiches, um, they all 
people want to sort of help in yeah, having, sorry, yeah, giving yeah. new recipes to the kitchen. Like we only know these recipes, but yeah. do you know any recipes? <laughs> and then the big guy who hates Paddington stands up and goes, oh, I can make a lovely strawberry panna cotta <laughs> with a cranberry glaze. Which sounds great. <laughs> it does sound really nice. Um, and They're all got desserts, because I don't know if anyone made a savoury, because yeah, they, they, they were asking about a dessert initially. Oh yeah, of course, because they said, have we got any pudding? No. <laughs> and that's when yeah, the ideas come out. <laughs> so they're all got these little long tables, yeah. and you get the sequence of them, everyone coming in. Yeah. It's a really well done sequence where, yes. as they're going around, panning around the kitchen, more fancy stuff and ingredients and, and it, cakes yeah. and it develops as it moves Yeah, around. the, the yeah. people are, are in there and working all, together. Yeah, and the, the canteen, all the tables are gone, all the school kitchen tables. They turn into a tea shop. A little tea shop <laughs> with little, um, uh, oh, what's the tablecloth uh, and round tables? Yeah, what's the, that style of tablecloth? What's it called? Oh, um. Gingham. G, yeah, gingham. Yeah, little gingham tablecloth, <laughs> some little sort of cottage, <laughs> cottagey feel. And he um, brings a cake round, he, um, one of the guys takes it, and I want to remember what Aunt Lucy says always use a dessert fork. So he spears this big bit of cake. He's <laughs> oh, like, yeah, he's, the dessert fork. He's like a toffee apple. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> toffee apples will come into play later. Toffee apples will come into play. <laughs> And uh, so yeah, so, and you see flower boxes coming up on the yeah. uh, on, or outside all the cells, <laughs> all the railings on the cells, <laughs> and all, yeah. all prettied up. And then the, I think the best bit is when the young guys read them all a bedtime yeah. story with the PA. Yeah, <laughs> they all lived happily ever after. Night, night, you lot. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Oh yeah, it's visiting day tomorrow. Yay! Visiting day, oh brilliant. So the family comes around. They've been because they've been investigating and looking up things. There's been more crimes happening. Oh god! So there's the one uh, at St Paul's. Oh yeah, the the nun. <laughs> that was the sexy nun. <laughs> Which again. So the gag is obviously Hugh Grant is dressing up as all these different characters yeah, to, to commit play, the crimes. Commit the crimes. To, yeah, to get them. And okay, to get the locations of. The so he's like, I need to get it, sneak in. So. He, you see this procession of nuns. It's quite nice, actually, mm, these nuns. They're holding a candle, all yeah, walking along quite, in their robe. That's quite pretty. And the, the nun in front of him is this old lady nun. Mm. He's sort of typical. And so he breaks off, and then, you know, they, they, they it's like the next day, and, oh, sorry, you can't go to the main hall because the statue's been broken. Mm. And then you've got this guard <laughs> saying, oh... security guard with his cup of tea. So, Whoa there, sister! <laughs> Spin it around, back it up behind the rope. He's telling the family, yeah, because he's <laughs> all the nuns have been rounded up because you know it was another. Because what happened? Yeah. Said, no, I was on duty that night. I could tell you what happened. He's like the sexiest nun ever. <laughs> <laughs> I saw this woman. To be oh. fair, I was, to be fair, as they, as they were going, processing along, I thought, like, yeah, Hugh Grant probably is better looking than some of yeah. them. Yeah, a pretty girl than some of them. And he wasn't even trying particularly girly makeup yeah, or anything. He had he was, a little mole, didn't he? On yeah. his, I think that was about it, really. Yeah. Just his little hat. <laughs> yeah, oh, that was so funny. Yeah. And so he, he, was, he was. He said, "I saw her go up to the whispering gallery." Uh, he, so, on he my gets the, so he gets the clues. So basically, the reason he stole the book is because there's clues to a treasure. In each of the twelve locations around London, a, a letter yeah. is found on a landmark that this little figure of a woman in the book is pointing to. Yeah. So that's why he's trying to go to get all of the twelve clues, which then make up the clue to where the ultimate treasure lies. Yeah. Um, so he gets the. Oh, it's gonna be a long one again. Yeah. <laughs> why are we, why it's a good we, film. It's a good film. <laughs> it's a good film. We're enjoying it again. It's good. Um, um, so he gets the Hugh Grant, then goes up to the the whispering gallery. I think it was where the security guard spots him, and he looks on a little statue. Great quick change scene though, mm. where he comes down and mm. dresses as a pope. Yeah, that's or, good. Or, 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 or some kind of. Um, and he gets a little. I think it's a letter C off of the the rear end yeah. of the statue, uh, and he goes. <laughs> stop you stop there uh, the security guard clocks him and he grabs the the rope to swing underneath it and the rope attached to the statue then makes the statue fall because yeah. um, it was coming loose uh, mm. and then uh, he gets the security guard gets on the radio as, as Hugh Grant the nun is running away and says, all, all units be aware there's an unusually attractive nun <laughs> <laughs> in the whispering gallery I'm making there as quickly as I can and he's doing a little <laughs> slow walk sip of the <laughs> that, was, that was brilliant yeah yeah so that was that that's how that one happened and so basically because all these other crimes have been happening, there was one, um, I think it's supposed to be Tower of London, where he's just supposed to be a king. Yeah. I don't know, like a knight, but they said he was a king. Yeah. And they, so they got the sketches in, in school newspapers, like, have you seen it? So he's like, oh, I've just... So the um, Knuckles comes in and says, let me have a look, I can, I can see you. Know, and then all these ki criminal friends come in and it's like... <laughs> in the little viewing window. Yeah, like, um, Paddington, excuse us a moment, click. It turns off the light, because there's a little light <laughs> that illuminates both sides of the window. And they're like, I don't trust them, they're, just, they're all criminals. So like, um, we can still hear you, you already turned off the light. It's the other one that's the microphone. It says microphone on it. And you're right, we are criminals. But who else are you going to use to find a criminal? Yeah. 
Yeah. No. So she shows on the newspaper and it's like, that's not a gang, that's a fancy dress party. Mm, yeah. So, and that's I will cool. say this, Paddington is in prison for two months at least. Yeah. And then seen later on, the uniforms are still pink. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think they liked them. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> oh, like Oh, fabulous. Oh, Joanna Lumley was in it as well. Oh, Joanna Lumley. <laughs> Joanna Lumley playing um, Phoenix Cannon's agent. Yeah. Uh, and they do this trick where they're interviewing her. And it, actually, to be fair, it sounds like a quite a genuine interview. And she's very she's very sweet. They bring her buns. Oh, such <laughs> lovely buns, darling. <laughs> lovely sticky buns. <laughs> yeah. Joanna Lumley's always a win. <laughs> yeah, she is. Um, right, what, yeah, where, where were we? We digress again. Well, no, because we... we we were saying about them why they had all the pictures. Oh right, yeah, of course, yeah. So we were kind of <clears throat> caught up. Yeah. So this is gonna be a two for two part again, isn't it? Mm, I think so. Damn it! <laughs> I'm trying so hard. It's alright. It's alright. No, probably didn't take this long. Mm, it's comprehensive. It's fine. Comprehensive overview. Yeah. Um. And then they all had a big party, and they. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they all had a great time. Happily ever after. Go see it. <laughs> yeah. um, right, what happened next then? Oh, I don't know. Um, um, they when oh the the mum. Oh yeah, because she said it's her, it's him. Go because she goes to see um um uh, hi yeah. yes Jessica and Ben because mm. they're both now in the in the kiosk. Yes. And like oh can you sell these papers and Capaldi's being a <laughs> it's like that's against the rule. You can't. <laughs> your bear is is evil and all this. And with good riddance to him. And she's like, oh, so we'll get me evil. Some of them evil. And um, so, so everyone still, you know, believes in Paddington's innocence. And she goes to the parrot. I don't suppose you've seen him, Mister Feathers. Yeah, He's behind you. <laughs> and of course, there's Phoenix on the balcony, yeah. which, as established. You can Hello see. there, Mrs. Brown. Come on, tea. Come on up and have a cup of tea. And he's got <laughs> every <laughs> picture, you grown. Every picture you've ever seen. <laughs> and none of them are like they all look like headshots. None of them yeah. are like scenes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is just that's very, very good. Someone had to do a bit of digging to get them. <laughs> that was really good. Oh, well, we went through one of his fan pages, wow, probably. Yeah, like that. yeah that's yeah. funny. All in little frames, all around. All properly framed and all. <laughs> Very nice. And course. there were a few paint. Actually, the paintings were quite nice. I didn't really look at the painting. Yeah, there were a few. Cause they weren't all pit photographs. So some of them were actual portraits. Oh right, okay. Of, of, all, all of Hugh Grant. Yeah. <laughs> so we're getting an idea of how narcissistic this man is. <laughs> Not Hugh Grant. <laughs> Mr. Buchanan. Yes. Mm, yes, indeed, yes. Um, and so uh, they have a little conversation, um, and Hugh Grant, like, Buchanan says, "Oh, really? That when they're discussing the possibility of the sketch that Mrs. Brown made." Well, because first he's saying about, "Oh, some good news. My play oh, yeah. might get done. My play may get some funding." Yeah. He, he starts going to a little bit of his his thing. Yeah. I mean, dark spotlight. Me. <laughs> da 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 da. <laughs> you look upset, Mrs. Brown. And then, um, that, and then, yeah, she says, uh, she says, really, that the chap, I don't think he could be the robber, the chap with the dazzling blue eyes. It's I'm a sorry, sketch, Mr. it's Buchanan. a pencil sketch. It was a pencil sketch, how nice did you know he had blue him. eyes? Mm. Yes, oh, um, must have coloured him in. <laughs> it's fabulous. And then they do a really wonderful scene where it's on his face and all the sketches. Mm, all the sketches pop up, all the black and white pencil sketches. And they're all lay over his eyes. Yeah, to be fair, he does have stunning blue eyes. He does, he does, yeah. yeah they, they, they pop. They popped like the popping popping book. <laughs> they popped like the popping book. <laughs> um, and that's when Mrs. Brown first gets then then starts getting suspicious about Buchanan as the yeah. potential offender. Yeah. Um, and it cuts to the next scene, which is her in the family kitchen. Did you know it's on the little uh, on the wall? There was a little um, like chalkboard thing mm. that said the Brown family kitchen to do one free Paddington. Oh, <laughs> no, I didn't notice that because previously when uh, when she, he was first writing his letter to Aunt Lucy. He was saying, I wonder what the Browns are doing, and you see sequences and putting posters up everywhere. Mm. And J Dog puts like posters up in the shape of Paddington, yeah, spells it out. Yeah, so it's really cute. So they're like, free this bear. Yeah, they really are really working hard to try and get him out. Yeah. Um, and yeah, basically, then she starts, uh, Mrs. Brown starts giving the idea to the family that Paddington, uh, Buchanan is the is the, the guy mm. that they're looking for, and then Mr. Brown overhears it and says, oh, "Don't be ridiculous. Yeah. You know, you're going you're going on the word of a criminal and a parrot." <laughs> 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 oh yes, I'm well behind this. Yes. <laughs> um, and uh, oh, what happens after that? Well, because no, uh, there's a <clears> sequence <throat> where the main gang, McGinty, Spoons, so Knuckle Spoons and Scoop. Something like that. Uh, 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 spoon, oh, 
It's Grips and Scoop or something, isn't it? Yeah, something like that. Something so like that. so the, the main big guy, the scrawny Aussie guy, which I've seen other things, I don't think I th don't think he's Australian, but and then he was in um the Lara Croft movies. Oh, okay. yeah. Which I like those, they're fun. Hmm. And um some he was an Indian guy, wasn't he? Oh yeah, the Indian guy, yeah. Yeah, bald Indian guy. Um, so they kind of like, look, we're going to make an escape. You know, we'll help, we'll help you prove your innocence. And I can't escape. I said, look, they're going to be. There's going to be a time where they're not going to turn up. You know, they're going to be one visit and then another visit. You won't have no home to go to. And so yeah, he's like, oh, I can't, I can't possibly do that. And it, so you cut to the family um, doing thing. You know, trying to prove the great. The, the, so they break into. Um, Buchanan's house. Well, mm. she breaks it. Mrs. Got, Mrs. Brown breaks it. So you got this whole heist thing. This is where the kids' interview with Joanne Lumley comes oh, in because yeah, they're on right. the phone yeah. and they use bits of the interview to convince him to go to meet her at the Ritz because yeah. she's like, "Oh, we've only got two minutes." Because yeah, she's like, mm. Joanne Lumley's character is a very sweet agent who entertains these children for the, for the interview. Mm. She says about him being having an ego. Like, well, he could have a career, but he doesn't want to work with other actors. Mm. All this stuff, and so she's just a, she's just who she is, and she's very sweet, and you know, treats the kids well, and like even leaves them in the office after I have to go, but enjoy it, you know, lovely buns, dear, lovely. Um, so they're using clips of the interviews. We've only got two minutes, and oh, I've got to meet this one these Broadway producers. So they're using these clips, like oh, yeah. Broadway producers. Uh, go to the Ritz, darling. Going to the Ritz, darling. Lovely, Lovely buns. buns. Yeah, and there's what? the girls recording it on a little <laughs> What in the oh, really lovely buns? Oh well, yeah, thank you. I have had my. Buns complimented at all. <laughs> I've never heard <laughs> when he's on the phone and they're playing it back, yeah. yeah. And trying to get him yeah, get him to go to the Ritz. Welcome to part two. Hello, part two. <laughs> um, <laughs> much like part one. Um and Yeah, uh, I think so, near enough. Yeah. I didn't see a flashy thing, but yeah, it's gone forty six, so <laughs> Well I either in part two or I've just said welcome to part two at the end of part one. <laughs> Hello, possibly part one. <laughs> Very similar to part one. Yes. <laughs> well, that, that's a thing that would have happened. <laughs> given, yeah. how, given how very few people watch these things anyway. <laughs> For now. For now. And, we'll uh, get there. Yeah, so Hugh Grant's on the phone and he goes, uh, well, I've never had a... He says, oh, sticky bun, 